In this recording, I'm going to talk about how to divide with complex numbers. And recall that complex numbers are in the form a plus bi, where a and b are just real numbers, and i is defined as the square root of negative 1. So when you divide complex numbers, for example, 4i divided by 2. Well, just as you'd suspect, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so you'd be left with 2i. Take, taking that a step more difficult, perhaps, if we had 5i divided by 3i, here we have i over i, and the i's cancel each other out, and you're just left with 5 thirds. Okay, the next step, if we have, let's say, 4 plus i over 2. Okay, that's just like me dividing both of the top things by 2, which is just giving me 4 over 2 plus i over 2, which is just 2 plus i over 2, which is the same as 2 plus 1 half i. Okay, and the last thing is if we have something like 6i cubed over i, here we have three i's up top and one on the bottom, so the one cancels on the bottom and the three becomes a two, and we're left with 6i squared. And if you looked at the recording for multiplying complex numbers, you would have learned what I call the i clock which helps with powers of i. And i squared is just equal to negative 1. And 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. And doing that with bigger powers, if we have i to the 28 divided by i to the 17, Again, we just take i and subtract the two exponents because of our rules of exponents, or laws of exponents. And 28 minus 17 would be i to the 11th. And then the i clock would tell us i to the 11th would be at i to the third, which is equal to negative i. Now, these I just put here as the basics of dividing, but certainly you're expecting there to be something a little more challenging, and this time around there actually is. So if we're dividing two complex numbers such as this, let's say we start with 2 plus 3i divided by 2i. So I could certainly break this up into two things and have 2 over 2i plus 3i over 2i. And then the 2 and the 2 cancel each other out, and we'd have 1 over i plus, and the i and the i cancel, and we just have 3 halves. 
which gives 1 over i plus 3 halves, but I don't know what 1 over i is. I do know that i is defined as the square root of negative 1, but normally we don't write numbers with square roots or radicals in our denominators. So we have to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So by rationalizing the denominator, what I mean is taking the irrational denominator, because it has a radical underneath, and rationalizing it by multiplying it by something that will make it a real number, a rational number. So to do that, when you're in these situations, you multiply the top and bottom, or the numerator and denominator, by what we call the complex conjugate. And what that is, is suppose I give you a plus bi. The complex conjugate would be a minus bi. So it's basically just taking the opposite sign of the imaginary part. So again, if I have 3 minus 2i, the complex conjugate would be 3 plus 2i. And when you multiply these two together, you will find that it takes away the i's and you're left with a rational number. So up here, if we start with 2 plus 3i and divide by 2i, 2i is just like writing 0 plus 2i. And the complex conjugate of that would be 0 minus 2i. So I can multiply top and bottom by a negative 2i like so. Now in cases where you don't have a real part, such as this one, 2i, we don't have a real number in front, you don't have to multiply that by the complex conjugate. You would simply need to multiply by i in this case because i times i would be a negative 1 and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 and that doesn't have a radical. That is a rational number. But for the sake of generalizing the instructions, no matter what your denominator is, if it has an i involved and doesn't simplify out to be a rational number, just multiply the top and bottom by the complex conjugate. If you remember that if you don't have a real part, you just can multiply by powers of i, um, more power to you. So doing this, we have 2 plus 3i times negative 2i, which means I have to multiply 2 and negative 2i to get negative 4i, and 3i and negative 2i to get negative 6i squared. And then 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Up top, we have negative 4i, and i squared simplifies to negative 1, because i is just equal to the square root of negative 1. So when I square both sides, I'm just left with negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 6 is a plus 6. i squared again is a negative 1, and negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. And you see that I've taken care of rationalizing my denominator. And then here, since all three of these terms are even numbers, I can divide everything by 2 to get negative 2i plus 3 over 2. And if I want to write that in a plus bi form, I'd have, uh, forgive this, 3 minus 2i over 2, which is the same as 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2i. And 2 over 2 is just 1, so I could have just written this as 3 halves minus i. And I'm running low on battery, so hopefully we can get through a couple other problems. Simplifying another one.
Okay, if I want to simplify this, I'll need to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the bottom. Now, remember that for complex conjugates, you want to take the opposite sign of the imaginary part. So a lot of times, students will end up writing 6i minus 2. But if you do that, you will, won't end up canceling out i's. Because 2 times 6i and negative 2 times 6i, um, you'd still have i's to deal with in some cases. So instead of doing that, here it actually would cancel, but I want to make sure, oops, wrong thing. I'm going to first start by rewriting my denominator in a plus bi form. And now I can go ahead and multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate, which is 2 minus 6i. Okay, you take the opposite sign of the imaginary part. And now foiling the top, 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 6i is negative 24i. 3i times 2 is plus 6i. And 3i times negative 6i is negative 18i squared. On the bottom, we'd have 4 minus 12i minus plus 12i minus 36i squared. Up top, combining like terms, we'd have an 8 and minus 18i. And i squared is the same as negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 18 is a plus 18. Down on the bottom, negative 12i and 12i will cancel each other out to equal 0. i squared is negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 36 is a positive 36. And we still have our 4. Up top, 8 plus 18 is 26. And 36 plus 4 is 40. Since all of our numbers are even, I can divide everything by 2 and get 13 minus 9i over 20. That's a, an acceptable answer. If you want to write in a plus bi form, you'd have 13 over 20 minus 9 over 20i. And there you have it. So I just want to give you one practice problem. Simplify three I over ten plus I. So pause the recording and get your answer, and when you're ready to compare with mine, play back. So if I want to simplify this, I need to multiply the top and bottom by the complex conjugate of my denominator. And I have 10 plus i, so the complex conjugate would be 10 minus i. And what I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. And now multiplying across, 3i times 10 is 30i. 3i times negative i is minus 3i squared. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times negative i is negative 10i. i times 10 is positive 10i. And i times negative i is negative i squared. i squared is just equal to negative 1. So negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3. So I'd have 30i plus 3 up top. Negative 10i and positive 10i cancel to equal 0. i squared is equal to negative 1. And negative negative 1 is a positive 1. So I'd have 100 plus 1. And simplifying this, we'd have 101 in our denominator. If I want to rewrite in a plus bi form, I'll write the real part first and the imaginary part second. And then splitting up the, fra uh, splitting up the fraction, I'd have 3 over 101 plus 30 over 101i. This is the imaginary part. 
or the BI part, and this is the real part, or the A. And that's all there is to dividing complex numbers.